What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and we're going to do a new sort of video. I'm going to predict who is going to be in the top 10 at the end of the 2021 season for both the ATP and the WTA. So I'm going to try and predict in order what the top 10 is going to look like and then in 12 months time we can see how close I was or how bad I was. I guess. So that is what we're going to go through. Uh, we're going to start with the WTA. So let's go through the WTA and have a look at the current top 10 for the WTA. So currently, Ashley Barty is the world number one. We have Simona Halep, the number two in the world. Three in the world is Osaka. And very close behind her is number four in the world, Sophia Kennan. Then you have the number five in the world, which is Alina Svitolina. Then you have Karolina Pliskova, the number six in the world. Number seven, Bianca Andreescu. Very close behind her is number eight, Petra Kvitova. And then very close to her, the Number nine in the world, Kiki Burtons. And then rounding out the top 10 is Sabalenka, who just made the top 10 at the end of the 2020 season. So there you have it. They are the rankings. That is what we're starting with going into the 2020 season. Now, we've got to remember, for the first couple of months of the season, the rankings are locked in. They don't change until I think about March when the rankings go back to normal and players can start losing points. So that's what I'm going to base my predictions on. So let's get on with the predictions. I think the number 10 in the world for the end of the 2021 season is going to be Alina Svetolina. So I think she stays in the top 10 in 2021, but I think she will drop down five spots because she's currently ranked five in the world. So I think she's going to drop. She does have the semifinals of Indian Wells 2019 protected. So she, because remember that event's being canceled or being postponed. She does have some points she can gain in Madrid and Miami which are huge events on the WTA. But the problem is with Svetolina, she has to defend semifinals of Wimbledon, semifinals of the US Open, and the WTA finals final that she made in 2019. All of those events, she had good results in 2019. So she has to defend a lot of points from about June or July onwards. She might have to win a major to get any higher, but that's why I think she's going to drop down to 10. Okay, going on to the number nine player by the end of 2021, I think it's going to be Bianca Andreescu. So she didn't play at all in 2020. We haven't seen her play since she got that knee injury back at the end of the year in 2019 at the WTA Finals. She's lucky because she can keep the points that she got from Indian Wells in 2019, so she's protected with those. And she does have some points she can gain at the Australian Open in Madrid, Rome, Roland Garros, and Wimbledon because she didn't do very well at some of those events, and others she didn't even play. And we've got to remember, she did have some big wins over Svetolina, Kennan, Williams, and Pliskova back in the 2019 season with only losing seven matches in that whole season as well. But I just think coming off a, not playing for over a year, the players that have emerged, players like Kennan, players like Sabalenka, you know, you've still got Osaka, Halep around there as well. I think she's going to struggle to come back. Okay, let's get to the number eight person in the world. The number eight spot by the end of the 2021 season will be... So I've gone with Muguruza, who is currently ranked 15 in the world. I think she is going to go up seven spots and reach the top 10. 10 again. She was a former world number one, of course. She's a couple of Grand Slams titles under her belt. She has the 2020 Australian Open final protected points. So that's why I'm picking her to really make a rise because she has those points already protected. And she has a lot of points that she can gain in tournaments like Miami, Madrid, Wimbledon, Cincinnati, Canada, Wuhan, and the China Open, which she didn't do too well in 2019 slash 2020. So she can get a lot of extra points. And don't forget, in 2020, she beat Halep, Azarenka, Svetolina, and Burtons. So there's some big names that she beat. All right, so let's get straight into the number seven in the world by the end of the 2021 season. I think it's going to be Serena. I think she's going to get back into the top 10. She dropped out of the top 10 at the end of 2020 because Sabalenka finished strong. But I think she's coming back. She's got the quarterfinals of the 2019 Australian Open under her belt that's going to be protected. And, and she can also do better if she does, you know, win that tournament or get to a final. And she also has points up for grabs at Roland Garros, Miami, Cincinnati. Rome and Madrid. So a lot of the clay court season, if Serena plays those tournaments, she's got a lot of points she can gain to push her back into the top 10. The only downside is she has to defend points at Wimbledon from 2019 and also the US Open from 2019 as well. But Serena's a goat, so we know that she could win any tournament at any time. She also doesn't play that many tournaments. So if she has a bigger schedule next year and plays a lot more matches, She's going to get a lot more points. So I've put her at number seven. Let's get to number six now. So number six might, it might be a little bit of a surprise for you guys. I put Sabalenka at number six. And the reason I've put her at number six is because she's coming off two titles to end 2020. She finished after the French Open. She won two titles back-to-back -back on hard court. And she always finishes strong. 
And she has so many points. If she does make a very good run at one of the majors, she has so many points she can make up. She has points at the US Open, Wimbledon, Miami, Madrid, Australian Open, China Open, Canada, and Roland Garros. So they're the biggest tournaments in the world. And she didn't do very well in those tournaments over the last two years. So she can get a lot of points if she does well in those events. And I think she is on the verge of a breakthrough. I think next year, she's going to finally break through at a Grand Slam. She hasn't played very well at the majors in the past. And I think next year, she might make a semi-final or a final of a major. So Sabalenka, she is number six in my predictions for next year. Let's get to the number five now. now number five, again, might be a little bit of a surprise to you guys. So I've got Ash Barty at number five. Now she is the, currently the world number one. So number five, that is four spots lower than what she's currently ranked at. Now, the only reason I put her down there, even though she has the semi-final of the Australian Open from 2020 protected because it's under the revised ranking, she has to defend so many events after the Australian Open. She has to defend the French Open, of course. She has to defend the WTA Finals at the end of the year. She has to defend the Miami title. So there are a lot of points just there. The China Open, she made the final there. Wuhan and Cincinnati, she made good runs at those tournaments too. So she has a lot of points to defend. And I don't know if she can do it. However, she does have a lot of points she can defend, uh, can make up. Sorry, she can make points up in Canada. She can make points up in Rome and Doha, but she has a lot more points to defend than she does to gain in 2021. All right, so Ash Barty slots in at number five. Let's get to the number four player in the predictions. And this one might be a little bit controversial. Some people might not like this one, but I put at number four, Karolina Pliskova. Now, a lot of people... Uh, put a lot of confidence in Pliskova, and she lets you down every time. She always lets me down when I put faith in her, so hopefully that she does not let me down. The reason why I picked her to be number four in the world by the end of the 2021 season is because she has a new coach, Sasha Bain, who is the former coach of Naomi Osaka. He was also a former hitting partner with Serena Williams. So he is a great get as a coach for Pliskova, and I think it might just lift her to the next level. She also has protected points at the Australian Open from 2019 when she made the semifinals there, so she doesn't have to worry about doing well in Australia. She can warm up there, and then later in the year, she has points that she can make up at Madrid, the French Open, the US Open, the China Open, and also Doha. So there's a lot of points that she can take from those events. Now, in order to, for her to get to number four, she's going to have to probably make a semi-final or two at the Grand Slams or even win one. So Pliskova at number four. Let's get to the number three player by the end of the 2021 season. I think the number three player is going to be Naomi Osaka. So currently, Osaka is number three. So I think she's going to stay in that spot. She got the Australian Open title of 2019 protected, and she has some really big tournaments that she didn't do well in over the last two years. Wimbledon, the French Open, Miami, and the WTA Finals. She has a lot of points up for grabs if she does well in those events. Also, we can't count out the fact that the Olympics are being played in her home country, and no doubt she's going to play the Olympics because she's the biggest star in Japan, well, one of the biggest stars, and you get ranking points for the Olympics. So don't count Osaka out at winning maybe a silver or gold medal at the Olympics with a bunch of ranking points coming there as well. So I think she'll maintain her ranking. I think she'll stay solid. So Naomi Osaka at number three, let's get to the number two player in the world by my predictions at the end of the 2021 season. I think the number two in the world is gonna be Sophia Kennan. So this is really based on the fact that she has the Australian Open title wrapped up already and under her belt. She doesn't have to worry about defending her Australian Open title. And she has a lot of points that she can make up because she hasn't been great over the last two seasons uh, in a lot of big tournaments. Besides the Australian Open and the French Open, there's a lot of points up for grabs. She can grab points at Madrid, at Rome, Miami, Wimbledon, Wuhan, China Open and the WTA Finals. So she has lots of points up for grabs. Also, just to put a cherry on top, she won more three-set matches in 2020 than anybody else. She won 10 and lost three. So she, you know that she likes to fight it out and she likes to go to the distance in her matches. And that's why I'm putting my faith in her to get to number two. She's currently number four in the world. She was the player of the year in 2020 as well. So keep that in mind. That's my prediction. Now the world number one, who's it gonna be? There's not too many names left. And I think the world number one by the end of the 2021 season is gonna be, it's gonna be Simona Halep, but it's gonna be a tight race. Like I said, I think Kennan might be able to get that number one ranking, but I'm gonna stick with Halep. I think Halep has more experience and that's the difference between Halep and Kennan. Simona Halep in 
in the Australian Open of 2020 made the semi-final, so those points are protected. And also she has some points to gain in some big events, including Cincinnati, the China Open, and the WTA Finals. Now we know she has to defend the Wimbledon title, which is a big title to defend. It's gonna to be tough for her to defend the biggest title of her career, arguably. And also a couple of those other tournaments, Rome, she has to defend that as well. Also, she won more titles in 2020 than anybody else. She won three titles and she only played six tournaments. So 50% strike rate, that is not bad. But I just think, and I've said this for 12 months now, that Simona Halep on her day, playing the best tennis she can, can beat anybody in the world. But the fact that she played six tournaments in 2020 and she won three, Three of those. That's what a world number one does. All right, so let's go through the full top 10 by the end of 2020. This is my predictions. Svetlina at number 10. Andrescu at number 9. Muguruza at 8. Serena Williams at 7. Sabalenka at 6. Barty at 5. Pliskova at number 4. Osaka at 3. Kennan at 2. And Simona Halep will be the world number one at the end of the 2021 season. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you like the list? Do you hate the list? Let me know who you would change. If you don't like one of the players, some people might think Pliskov is too high. Let me know who you would replace her with. And also let me know down in the comments below what your top 10 by the end of 2021 is going to be. I want to know what you guys think, but that's my predictions. We'll revisit this in 12 months time and we'll see how many I got right.